Now, instead of a music special tonight, we're going to do something a little different. As the offering is received, I'd like for my wife to introduce a testimony to you of something very special that happened in last year's meeting with Brother Copeland. We're so excited tonight. Hallelujah. We're, we're calling this a miracle service. Amen. Because we know that miracles are going to break out here tonight. Amen. Amen. Yep. That's Amen. what we expect. That's what we believe. And last year, in this same meeting, on the same night, on yeah. Friday night, my friend Jenny Cooney, standing right, she's a member of Living Word. Where, where were you sitting in the back? No, we were sitting right over there. Yep. <clears throat> and she was bound in it's this... upside down. Sorry. I don't even know what this contraption looks like. She, her neck was broken and uh, her back was broken and she was bound in this contraption. And so Jenny's gonna tell you about what happened to her. A month before um, the conference, I fell off a ladder. And- What were you doing? I was painting. Painting, yes. Okay. I, and I fell off a ladder and I broke my neck and my back in two places. Now you didn't tell him, to, 13 feet she fell. Yeah, I fell 13 onto feet. Onto a, a metal? It was um, a pipe that she I fell, fell on onto, top, onto across my shoulders. And um, the break in my neck, it was my C7, and it's called a burst with a retropulsion. So the inside of my vertebrae exploded and the outside had a bunch of fractures, and then it pushed towards my spinal column. So it was pushing out. So we came to the service last year on Friday night, and Brother Copeland got done teaching. Well, tell him what you were believing first. Oh, I was believing for <laughs> expecting a miracle. Amen. And so... And tell him the scripture. Oh, in my scripture. <laughs> Whose testimony is this anyway? Well, I, I, I know. To get she whole, knows it. I want her to get the whole story. You have to know the story. God gave me a scripture in um, Luke 8, 48, and it says, And he said unto her, Your faith, your trust, your confidence in me has made you well. Go enter into peace, undisturbed well-being. And so I stood on that scripture and a bunch of other healing scriptures, and we came that night, and I was expecting. And so Brother Copeland was walking back and forth after he was done teaching, and all of a sudden he stopped, and he goes, somebody's getting healed back here. And I was like, oh. And he said, you won't have to have any surgery, because they were looking to fuse my whole neck where I wouldn't be able to move it. And then he said, as a matter of fact, you're getting a brand new vertebrae. And I said, looked at my husband, I said, I receive it and claim it. And so we went home that night and I got up the next morning and God said to me, feel the back of your neck because it stuck out. And so I feel the back of my neck and it was in place. My vertebrae went back into place. <laughs> but. And the greatest thing is, is I got to go to my doctor in two weeks. God told me to be patient, which was very hard. And I went to my doctor and they took the x-rays and I asked him, I said, what do you see? And he sees, he says to me, I see a new vertebrae. He goes, it's like a baby and it needs to mature. Wow. Isn't that amazing? And so two weeks after that, I went back for another appointment. And with this, they took off that piece right there. And so I just had the neck piece. And then two weeks after that, I came back. They took this off and started um, physical therapy, which I only had to go three times. Three months after my fall, which they told me in the hospital, I was supposed to be paralyzed and in a wheelchair now, okay? That it would take me 18 months to recover, even if I had the surgery. And within three months, I had everything off, and I ran 10 miles. Hallelujah. <laughs> we give you the glory, Jesus. We give you the glory. Isn't that marvelous? Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Pain, disease has to leave this place tonight. Amen. Sickness right. has to leave this place tonight. Amen. Amen. Are you believing? I'm believing too. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Awesome. Amen. Well, let's stand, please. Let's stand for a moment. We've been talking about honor, and we certainly have someone that we can, we can honor in terms of the office that he stands in, his faithfulness to it, his long service in it, and all that is yet to come. And of course, Brother Kenneth and Gloria Copeland really don't need an, an, an introduction. I simply want you to express your love for them as he comes to minister right now. Amen. Hallelujah. Thanks, man. I love you, Kenneth. <laughs> oh, somebody come on. Hallelujah. Wow. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate it. Oh, my, 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 my. Glory, 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 glory. Glory to the Lord. Glory to the Lord God. Father, we do thank you. This wonderful testimony tonight is such a thrill. It, it's, it's, it's beyond wonderful. It is marvelous in our eyes. Let's just praise him and thank him and worship him. God's presence is here. Hallelujah. And his power is already working. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on. Praise the Lord. Just worship him and praise him. Worship him and praise him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. There's a, there, there is a person here that's being healed in that same area of your neck. Someone else is receiving uh, a, a, a miracle on, more on the creative side in your right jaw bone in this area right in here. Pain desist now, saith the Lord. Thank you for it, Father. Thank you for it, Lord Jesus. Thank you for it, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Turn around and bless two or three people. In the name of Jesus, smile big as you can. And then you may be seated. Mac and Lynn, thank you all so much again for having Gloria and me here again this year. We're, like I said last night, um, this is not going somewhere to preach. This is coming home to preach when we come here. Praise God. Open your Bibles with me, please, to the book of Isaiah. Chapter 58. And... Um, We talked last night about calling things that be not as though they were. And, and we, we, one of the things that, that was extremely vital and important to anyone's faith is prayer, receiving, praise, Everything we do must be based soundly on the Word of God. Just to go out and just, you know, just start throwing verses in every direction. No, you'd be a whole lot better off to focus in 
on one or two verses and live it night and day than you would to pick out a hundred of them and don't pay much attention to any of them. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Now this, in verse 14, then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth. Now that scripture there is the one that the Lord first revealed to me and, and started talking to me about in believing God for jet airplanes. Now, anybody in here that don't think jets cost a lot of money, <laughs> uh, where have you been? I, I mean, model airplanes cost a lot of money. I mean, come on, man. Any, anything that flies is going to, and, and, the, and the, they wrote, I'll tell you, airplanes and television, they wrote the book on expensive. I mean it. And I was, I was having difficulty. Now I'd been flying for a long time and, and flying a jet for somebody else, psh, I had no trouble seeing myself doing that. And I didn't have any, any trouble believing God for, for uh, uh, propeller driven airplanes. I mean, I'm, as long as they'd fly, it'd fine with me. And, but, but I, I needed to push through and, and get a breakthrough and come on up to that place where my faith took hold of that. And that's the scripture that the Lord gave me. And I was thinking about it this afternoon. One of the, uh, one of the first airplanes that this scripture produced was a, a Lockheed Jetstar. And it was a full four engine airplane, first four engine airplane I was ever rated to fly. And I was thinking about it this afternoon, Mac and I flew that airplane together. And we just had a lot of fun doing that. Amen, I mean, it's a wonderful airplane. And at that time, it was the, the fastest airplane that, that God had ever blessed me with. And uh, <laughs> well, we're talking about, I'm gonna tell on you. <laughs> talking about four engine airplanes back in uh, the Vietnam conflict, Southeast Asia. Mac was flying a, a uh, Boeing KC-135. This is a, a uh, uh, jet fuel tanker. It was the military version of the 707. And <laughs> that thing full of jet fuel as a tanker. Now Mac would take off and he'd fly from there to the, the combat area and, and, um, and airplanes would come off the um, the uh, out of the combat zone and hook up on him and he'd feed fuel to him and all that. Well, hot weather, awful. Humidity, have, can you imagine 114% humidity? Well, it don't exist, but you feel like it did. <laughs> Amen. And, and those, those are the conditions that airplanes, particularly jet airplanes, hate. They don't want to fly in that. It is that kind of a day. The procedure back there then was load this, load this thing up. Forget about the gross weight, just load it up. We got guys out there fighting. They need the gas and they need to get it to them and forget figuring runway length. You just line up on the thing, use it all, and get down to the other end of it and yank the thing off of the ground. That's pretty well standard operating procedure, wasn't it? <laughs> and right at the moment, I mean right at the most critical moment it could have possibly happened, just as Mac, who by the way, was the youngest aircraft commander in the United States Air Force at the time which was an achievement within itself. And anyway, just as, he, just, just as he rotated this thing, 
I mean, it's just in that, in that bit of a no man's land there where you come, come out of the ground cushion effect and now the airplane has got to fly and all this hot muggy air and the thing's not wanting to do anything and all of a sudden right at that point an engine seized up on it and the engine left the airplane. All of the experts said it couldn't fly. Not in those conditions. Not at that weight. But it did. It did. Amen. <laughs> Mac, Jesus, and Lynn. <laughs> And a whole lot of grace. Amen. Nursed that thing. Right. Now, here, here's the thing of it is. When you've got an airplane that's just barely flying and you introduce some bank into it, you have decreased your lift on that airplane. You've pushed it closer to a stall. And he nursed that pig <laughs> back around and got that thing on the ground and everybody walked off perfectly safe. Isn't that one of them? I think y'all together, Lord. Amen. Uh, and I'll, I'll tell you, it, it's this marvelous thing. In fact, um, we have someone very special here tonight from the Federal Aviation Administration, I'd like to introduce Mr. Kevin Morris, FAA Safety Team Program Manager to the stage, please. And he'll have some more to say about Mac's flying career. Praise God. Amen. Mr. Morris. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, thanks. Can everyone hear me okay? All right, thank you. Uh, this is my very first time uh, to your church. Uh, wow. <laughs> it's something quite impressive. Um, as Kenneth Copeland mentioned, my name is Kevin Morris. I am with the Federal Aviation Administration. And tonight, I have the real honor of presenting the highest award that the FAA bestows upon an airman, which is called the Wright Brothers Master Pilot Award. This award tonight is to be given to Airman James McBride Hammond. Now, Absolutely. So, a little bit about this award. Uh, in, in aviation, we are all about numbers. We have, we have thousands of hours of flight times. We have thousands and hundreds of landings that we do and numerous instrument approaches, numbers, numbers, numbers. We have currency numbers, what we can fly with passengers. It's all numbers. We all write down numbers all the time. Tonight, there's just one number that's really important, and that's 50. In order to be eligible to receive the Wright Brothers Master Pilot Award, an airman has to have 50 years in the cockpit of aircraft. Well, that's impressive. And I'll tell you right now, I'm not afraid to admit it, I'm 41. Uh, so Airman Hammond has been flying nine years, flying nine years longer than I've been alive, uh, which is uh, remarkable as it stands alone. Uh, but before I ask uh, Airman Hammond and his wife Lynn to come up here, uh, we have a special video I believe we've prepared. James McBride Hammond began his flying career in 1965 while attending Virginia Military Institute. After graduation, Mack entered the United States Air Force, continuing his flight training at Moody Air Force Base in Valdosta, Georgia. Mack served two tours in Southeast Asia, accumulating 198 combat missions and just under 1,000 combat flight hours. He was honorably discharged in 1970 with the rank of captain, 
as well as multiple aviation awards. Mack continued his flying career by purchasing a full-service commercial aviation operation, which he expanded into the air freight business. In the late 1970s, a merger brought Mack and his wife Lynn to Minnesota, where they eventually began Living Word Christian Center. Mack has since combined his passion for flying with his desire to further the gospel. He annually travels to ministry engagements. He also takes time to fly other ministers around the world to share the gospel. Mack's excellence in aviation has allowed him to progress from flying the smaller T-41 and T-37 aircraft to the much larger KC-135 Alpha and the F-101 jet fighter. He flew DC-3s in his charter business and is captain qualified in multiple aircraft, including the B-707, the Cessna 500, and the CE-650. His high level of airmanship is on full display during his aerobatic flying. 50 years into his flying career, excellence has earmarked every aspect of Pastor Mac's life and ministry. His aviation career has proven his depth of knowledge, expertise, and consistency in using his passions to serve others. Truly amazing. Uh, at this time, I'd like to ask Airman Hammond and his wife, Flynn, to please come up on stage. Thank you. Very nice to meet you. Wow. So whenever I'm honored with presenting the Master Pilot Award to an airman, I always search through some of the records to find a, a, a couple unique things, and it wasn't hard here uh, by any stretch of the imagination. One of, one of the things that stood out to me is I have, I have about 7,000 hours of flight time. I flew in the airlines before coming over to the FAA. I still fly now doing check rides and uh, things. Um, one of the things that caught me was uh, Airman Hammond has roughly 970 hours of combat flight time. So I, I have 7,000 hours of flight time. Not one of those hours did anybody shoot at me. <laughs> and, and I will tell you right then, it was stressful enough. Not every one of the 7,000 hours, but certainly not the 970 hours you faced combat tours. That was very impressive. One of the other things we do when we award an airman uh, with the Master Pilot Award is we present them what we call a blue ribbon copy of their airman record. It's everything that we at the FAA know, and we know everything. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> everything that we know that that airman has done, which in aviation, if it's done, it's written, it's documented somewhere. Now, I've given out a few of these awards, and most of the blue ribbon packages are uh, half inch, maybe to an inch thick. Um, when Airman Hammonds arrived, um, it deserved its own FedEx truck. <laughs> no, I've been dragging this thing around for a while. So it is going to be the first thing I present to you is your blue ribbon copy of what. <laughs> Uh, some of the other things that come with the award package here, uh, we have letters from our regional Great Lakes Region Flight Service Manager. Um, the letters is, are given to both Airman Hammond and his wife Lynn. As any pilot knows, there's no way you can stand alone through an aviation career, and it takes an extremely special woman to stand beside you surviving through a 50-year aviation yes. career. That's true, Thank you. No doubt about that. 
So we have two pins, one for Lynn and one for Airman Hammond here for the Master Pilot Award, as well as the letters from Jim Gardner. I present that to you. Thank you. Thank you. And we also have a Master Pilot Award certificate that we put in a little black binder here for Airman Hammond, recognizing 50 years of service. And I hope you have one extra hand because there's one more piece of hardware that you, you do receive. <laughs> this here is our plaque recognizing the Wright Brothers Master Pilot Award uh, designated to Airman James McBride Hammond. On behalf of the Federal Aviation Administration, thank you for your service to our country, your dedication to professionalism and safety in aviation. Thank, thank you, sir. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank thank you, you so much. Thank you. How about that? Oh man, oh man, oh man. Thank you. They probably want you to say a few words. Uh, I'm speechless. I'm speechless. Uh, I just want to know who set this up without telling me about it. Oh, that was the uh, one piece I needed to mention as well. I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> so it takes three current airmen to nominate an individual for the Master Pilot Award. And I'm going to name those three airmen and then please give them a good round of applause. The first one you might be familiar with, Airman Kenneth Copeland, who is also a Master wow. Pilot Award recipient. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. The second nomination letter came from Airman Lane Johnson, if you would raise your hand. Thank you, Lane. And really the driving force behind this, the man that worked tirelessly, that filled up my inbox and email, my voicemails on my cell phone, relentless, Mr. Robert Bakke. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Amen. Wow. Well, that was... Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Well, y'all be seated. Uh, this is um, uh, more of a blessing. Yeah, you can take all of that. You got a wheelbarrow? <laughs> This is, I, I really am speechless. This is a, uh, an honor that you can't imagine uh, the depth of, of feeling that you have, you know, and uh, so I'll just let it go at that. Uh, I'm sure you want to get back to healing and Brother Copeland. Uh, I do too. <laughs> You could have warned me. No, no. You could have warned me. You didn't me. warn me. <laughs> Did you enjoy that slick way I got into that? <laughs> oh, I have to give the Lord 100% of the credit for that. Because I'm thinking, how am I going to, am I going to go about doing this and not spoil the surprise of it? And that scripture just snapped in, into my spirit and the rest of it was so easy. And he just sat there and just lapped up the whole thing. <laughs> and it, it did give me an opportunity to share with you that incident in, uh, in, in Vietnam and, and what a marvelous, miraculous thing that that was. And quite, wow. Quite a job of flying, I, I, I just have to tell you. And, and, and I have no doubt that Lynn had as much to do with that or more than Mac. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Thank you, Lord. Father, we give you praise and honor tonight for your word. Thank you, Lord. We praise you and thank you for all of these wonderful things that you've placed in our lives blessed us so. And tonight we come before your word with an expectant 
strong faith, strong desires in the spirit. And we open our hearts and we open our minds to receive revelation from heaven. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And we look towards you, greater one, our helper, our comforter, praise God, our intercessor. Oh, we thank you. Our strengthener, our advocate, our teacher, glory to God, the miracle worker himself, our healer, counselor, we look to you tonight. And we look to you in faith to equip me to stand in the office under which you have called and placed me. And we look boldly to you and we declare that through your teaching, through your help, through your insight, ideas, concepts of the kingdom of God, everyone in this room will hear the word accurately and it'll produce faith and it will produce power and it will produce everything we need tonight. Spirit, soul, body, and financially. In Jesus name. Amen. Glory, 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 glory. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I will um, make this statement again this evening. All sin, all sickness, all poverty, all human suffering is the result of satanic hatred for the human race. Amen. All of it. God is not responsible for one second of it. Amen. God is good and his mercy endures forever. Say it with me. God is good and his mercy endures forever. Say it again. God is good and his mercy endures forever. One more time. God is good and his mercy endures forever. Amen. Let's look at Proverbs chapter four. The fourth chapter of the book of Proverbs And we'll look at the 20th verse. Now this is the Holy Spirit's own account and outline how to receive anything from God. Amen. Amen. And if you will check this out, listen to it carefully as we go through it, and then think about what we talked about last night, and we'll go back over and look at in, in, uh, in the 11th chapter of Mark once again. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my saying. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, 
for they are life unto those that find them and health. Actually, the Hebrew says, and medicine to all their flesh. Now, all your flesh would start with your hair and wind up at the bottom of your feet. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Don't leave your hair out. <laughs> Amen. I, I caught on to that a long time ago. When I, I, I found out in the Word of God that the hairs on my head were numbered. Well, they're mine. They're mine. I want all of them. Amen. Every last one of them, they're mine. And I believe I, I receive them, keep them, glory to God, that original count. And I spend time talking to it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart for they are life unto those that find them in medicine to all their flesh. Now notice this, keep your heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. Out of, the, out of your spirit being come the spiritual forces of life. Now, Let's take a look then once more at Mark chapter 11, where we were yesterday evening. And notice from the 20th verse, in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots Peter calling to remembrance saith unto him, Master, behold the fig tree which you cursed is withered away. And Jesus answering said unto them, have faith, of, have faith in God, or as we noticed last night from the reference, have the, God, have the faith of God. It's also translated, have the God kind of faith. And we noticed that in the 14th verse, Jesus answered and said to that fig tree, no man eat fruit of you hereafter forever. So Jesus spoke the desired end result. Now I want you to notice his, his manner of conduct. No man eat fruit of you hereafter forever and his disciples heard it and they come to Jerusalem. Man, he walked off from that tree. He, if, if they hadn't said something about it, he never would have. He had already said all he was ever going to say to that tree. Faith had the last word. Now, he just spoke to it, turned around and walked off. That is the end of it. There ain't no use bringing it up again. There's no use going over there and, and, and looking around under, and, and checking it out. You notice, go back here with me now for a moment. He spoke to it, went to Jerusalem and took care of business there in the temple, preached all day. And when evening was come, he went out of the city. Now they had to walk right, right past that tree. They walked right past that tree. He went right back exactly the way he came, walked right past that tree, and nobody said anything about it. Now, if, it'd been, if, it, if, it, if you could have seen any change, I'll guarantee you Peter to said something. <laughs> but we all know that. But now let's take a look at Jesus. He walked past that tree.
never said anything about it, never looked at it, never checked it out. He'd already said all he had to say. He didn't have to make this thing come to pass. Now this is big about faith. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Romans 10, 17, right? That's the only way faith comes. Now, there's been ideas about faith, you know, well, <laughs> years ago. I, I'm talking about back in the first few years of, of this ministry, I, I was with a, uh, a man that was, oh my goodness, what a, what a powerful man of God. And, and um, I was just blessed to be in his presence. And I, I, was, I was speaking in, in the church there and and they were having a, 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 a meeting that morning with a, a, a number of young preachers and they asked me if I'd like to go and I said, yeah, sure. And uh, <laughs> he, was telling, he was telling ministry stories and just wonderful things and, and he, was, he was talking about his, um, he, <laughs> and, oh, well, one, situation that I, I remember that um, he knocked his pocket watch off of the, off of the table and, and he picked it up and listened to it. Father, that ought not be that way. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, all of us were kind of big eyed, you know, <laughs> and and this, this uh, young fellow, obviously uh, real fresh out of school, and uh, he said, <laughs> Brother, might I ask, what traumatic experience in your life caused you to have that kind of faith. <laughs> now I'm exaggerating, but not much. <laughs> and he smiled and he said, I got saved. <laughs> That's where he got that faith. Did you get that? Yeah. See, that's Jesus' faith. We read it. We read last night. Let's take a look at that. In Roman, Romans, um, the twelfth chapter. And the apostle Paul, by the Holy Spirit, wrote this in the third verse: "I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you." I'm not talking to every man in the world. He's talking to every man among them. Not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think but to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man. Every born again man has the measure of faith. Amen. Now that means that faith can be measured. Now the measure means simply that every one of us all got exactly the same amount of faith. There, there's not different levels of faith because of different spiritual backgrounds. No, no. No, no. God's no respecter of persons. And besides that, it's not given out based on anybody except Jesus. Whatever Jesus got, that's what we get. Folks, that's the reason why he came. That's the reason why it came, was in order to get for us everything that Adam lost and more. Amen. Amen. So whatever Jesus received when he was raised from the dead, the firstborn from the dead belongs to every born after that. Amen. We are joint 
heirs together with him. And we are born again, not of corruptible seed. We can't say enough about this if you're going to live a life of faith. You have to meditate on this all the time. Do you remember what it says in the second chapter uh, of the book of Philippians? Let this mind be in you. You have to think this way on purpose because your natural mind ain't never going here. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Now, now listen, who thought it not robbery to be called equal with God. Now see, just your natural mind, it, it, it ain't even going close there. You have to let that get into your thinking. But you see, we, we are an exact DNA copy of him. Your spirit man. That word seed raised him from the dead. He was, the scripture said, he was manifested in the flesh. That's when he was born in, in uh, Bethlehem. Amen. He took upon himself flesh and dwelt among men. But it said he was justified or made righteous or made alive in the spirit. Now, when did that happen? In hell. He was separated from God. That's spiritual death. That's exactly what happened to Adam. The only difference is Adam did it by choice and Jesus did it by sacrifice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. He was separated from God. That's spiritual death. And that's the death that the Bible refers to at all times unless it specifically names the fact that it's talking about the physical body. Spiritual death. That was a problem to start with. Man separated from God, how are you going to get him rehooked again? So in hell itself, he suffered there he, but it says, he was made, <laughs> he was made righteous. He was justified, made righteous, same word. Justification, righteousness, same word. In the spirit, he was the first man to ever be born again from sin to righteousness. Now he never sinned, but he bore our sin, hallelujah. He bore our sickness. He was made a curse for us. Amen. Oh, glory. It didn't take me long to get happy tonight. <laughs> glory to God. And in hell itself, he suffered there. And the scripture said in the 52nd chapter of Isaiah, the 14th verse, it said he was marred so terribly that his form no longer appeared to be human. I'm, I'm totally satisfied that that's what that centurion saw happening to his body. It began while he was still on the cross. When all of this struck him, Amen. Amen. And he cried out, my God, my God. Now, in hell itself, suffered every demon of hell, every, all darkness, all sin, sin, sickness, disease, the whole curse at one time and their attempt to annihilate him do away with him forever. But in the midst of that, you can read it in the first chapter of the book of Hebrews. It's listed there exactly what he said when he brought in the first begotten again from the, from the dead. Called him God. What's he doing? What's God doing? Calling things that be not as though they were. 
called him God, said, let all the angels of God worship him. And those words, by the Holy Spirit, glory to God, struck his helpless, emaciated spirit. And he began to, whoa, whoa, whoa. this unknown quantity, something the devil had never seen and had no idea it could possibly happen. It was a mystery hidden in God. A man being born again, you can't do that, but he did. And all of a sudden, out from under that demon pile, here he came. Whoa! <laughs> I mean, yeah. devils bouncing off the walls of hell in every direction. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Don't you love it? <laughs> glory, glory, glory! And Satan had to bow before him, and he took his keys away from him. And he said, all power has been given unto me both in heaven and in earth. Therefore you go, you take my name, you preach this gospel to every creature. In my name, these signs will follow you. You cast out devils, you speak with new tongues. You take up serpents and they can't hurt you. You drink any deadly thing and it can't do you any harm. And you lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Yeah. Woo! Glory. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Now, Think about the word seed. Born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible by the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Amen. Amen. Now, get this. The faith on the inside of your born again spirit being was in that seed. Your healing tonight has been in you ever since you got born again. It is in that seed. Amen. All that you could ever be on your wildest dream, see any way to use in this natural physical world is on the inside of you right now. God made you rich before the foundation of the world. Hallelujah. All increase is on the inside of you. It's in there. But somehow or another, you're going to have to get the bucket in the well and get it out. <laughs> and that's called faith. Praise God. And it's his faith. Well, Brother Copeland, I just don't know whether I have faith enough to do that or not. Now, wait a minute. The most miraculous thing that has ever taken place the Lord asked me one time, a number of years ago, just, just right out of the blue, he said, <clears throat> what in your opinion is the most powerful display of my power and ability in the Word? I said, well, there's no question about it. The day you said light be and light was and you, this whole universe, I, and then, you know, what is it? At the speed of light, the first 24 hours, something like 16 billion miles a universe. And it's still moving. He said, oh, no, that is easy. 
Well, it took me back. He said, when I did that, I had no resistance. Nobody was standing against me. He said, I didn't have any people to fuss with me. <laughs> but he said, when I raised Jesus from the dead out of hell, he said, everybody was against me. Raising a man made sin out of hell's torment, causing that spirit being to be completely, totally recreated. He said that was the most an intensive and the most powerful release of spiritual force ever known. Now, get this. He said, it, it just literally blew up on the inside of me. He said it took exactly the same amount of power to cause your spirit to be born again as it did his. He said, you just as dead as he was. Amen. To cause an eternal spirit being to be completely recreated out of sin into righteousness? Come on, man. And you had faith enough to do that? That's the biggest thing you'll ever believe for in your whole, your whole existence from now as long as eternity rules. That's it right there. That set you and me apart from all other category of human beings throughout eternity. And, and, and once the resurrection comes, huh? Once the resurrection comes, you see Jesus got resurrected, we get resurrected just like him. We get everything he got, not, not less, exactly the same. Let this mind be in you. Amen. And, and you, you, hey, 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 amen. And throughout eternity, are you listening to me now? Throughout eternity, there never will ever again be any more glorified ones. We're it. Because once Satan's put away, that ain't never happening again. Nobody again will have to come up against him and fight our way by faith through sin, sickness, demons, fear, poverty, debt, and all the hell on this earth. Thank God nobody else will ever have to go through this. But that sets us apart. Amen. Let me give you something else to shout about. Tonight, right now, while we speak, there's a man in the Godhead. We are well represented, my brother and sister. Amen. Our blood brother Amen. is on the throne tonight. Amen. Oh, but wait a minute. Stop. <laughs> We've been raised up together. We've been made to sit together with him in heavenly places. You're sitting on the throne tonight just the same as Jesus is. He's at the right hand. Glory, 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 glory. Somebody got healed of stomach ulcers just as I said that. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Gloria said in, uh, some years ago in healing school one morning, we have no more business with sickness than we do with sin. 
Sickness don't belong to us any more than sin does. We don't have any business sinning. We don't have any business being sick because Jesus bore the sin and the sickness and the disease and the poverty. Hallelujah. <laughs> glory, glory, glory to God. Now remember what we said, the curse is threefold, spiritual death, sickness, and poverty. Now, if you, if you go into the um, 28th chapter of, of Deuteronomy and in the, the curse of the law, the curse for breaking the law, you'll not only find poverty there, you will find poverty and debt. Debt is part of the curse of poverty. You don't have any business being in debt. Amen. You're the blessed. You're the blessed. We're supposed to be the head, not the tail. But the moment you bow your knee, and that's what happens. I said, Lord, now I know that you're not, you're, you're, you're not at all against medical science. I know that. I've known that for years. You're certainly not against, against doctors and they're fighting the same devil that we are. Amen. If it hadn't been for them, a lot of the Christians would have died. Well, thank God for that. But I said, what's the difference in going to a doctor and going to a banker? I, I'm just, I was struggling with that. Man, I mean, he whipped back at me like that. He said, Kenneth, you don't have to enter a covenant to go to a doctor. But you become the servant. You don't become a servant of that doctor. Actually, the doctor's serving you, not the banker. No. The scripture said the borrower is servant of the lender. Well, what are we going to do? It's called faith. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Now, when, when Gloria and I first found this out in 1960, uh, latter part of 1967, man, we said the same thing. Uh, my face fell, her face fell. And it's, uh, I looked at her, I said, what are we going to do? She put her finger over there on that verse. I've just read her out of Romans 13. And she said, if that's what the book says, that's what we're going to do. As she said that thinking we may not ever have anything of any size, but it don't make any difference. That's what the book says. That's what we're going to do. Well, see, we were well taught in matters of borrowing. We were not taught at all in living by faith a debt-free lifestyle. I didn't even know you could. I wasn't taught that. I wish I had been. Do you remember the scripture that says, raise a child up in the way that he goes, uh, should go, and when he gets old, he won't turn from it? You really ought to read that sometime and not just quote it. Did you know it was talking about debt when it said that? <laughs> Amen. We're supposed to be teaching our children, which we, we did in our household. You teach them all matters of finance according to heaven's economy and according to the kingdom of God. And Jesus said, if you seek first my kingdom and, and my righteousness, all these things will be added to you. In other words, he's saying, I'm covenanting with you. If you do this thing the way I tell you to do it, you don't have to be seeking all that other stuff. Right. Saying if you're not seeking all that stuff, you certainly don't have to go to the Babylonian world Amen. to get your need met because they ain't going to meet your need. They're going to create more need. Right. Yeah. Wow. Amen. They're not going to supply your need. Not without a price, but the blessing of the Lord, right. it maketh rich and he adds no sorrow. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Good. But now here we go. We're back to where we were talking about last night. This is a matter of diet and exercise. Everything God created has to be nourished. Every living thing, all the bugs have to eat. That's right. <laughs> Mac, Mac Goldberg told me one time, he, he, was, he showed me some pictures of him. Oh, Lord. Mac, God bless him. He's in, he's in heaven tonight. But back at the time when Mac got saved, is, is some question about when he bathed the last time. And he just, and his scraggly, ugly beard and no teeth across the front. But Mac got born again and fell in love with everything that moved. And before that, he didn't love nothing. He's an outlaw, uh, bike, motorcycle gangster, you know, and all that. And uh, <laughs> he said, you know, and you see those ugly pictures of him. And just uh, stuff all over his old nasty beard. <laughs> and he says all kinds of critters in there. <laughs> he said, I, I was, he said, well, you know, he said, everything got to have a home. <laughs> and he said, I, I, I was a little slow to, to, to clean all them donuts and stuff out of that beard because he said, them little fellas was eating that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, okay. <laughs> But all them little critters have to be fed. Every living thing has to be nourished. And God created the food that exactly nourishes every creature that he made. Every little bug has perfect bug food. <laughs> Amen. So, but when it comes to us, oh, we don't need God. We'll fix this thing on our own. And two heart attacks and three bypass later. But good diet alone will not bring you to that place of excellent health. You can have a wonderful diet and never get out of the chair on your back porch. And guess what, chubby? <laughs> You'll get fat on spinach <laughs> if you don't move. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> now, what about faith? Somebody that just reads the Bible all the time, just reads the Bible. And, 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 yeah, and, but you don't ever act on the Word. You're not a doer of the Word, but a hearer only. You're in spiritual trouble right there. Now there's a step you can go further than that, which is actually becoming a spirit builder. You can become a bodybuilder, good diet, good exercise. Ah, but then that next level up where you begin to increase the body, not just healthy. Same thing, truth your spirit. Amen. Because a man speaks in an unknown tongue, he edifies himself. Charges himself up, builds himself. Jude 20, building yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. But now let me, let me back up one step there. Did you know you can be praying in the Holy Ghost and actually not build yourself up? Well, how could I do that? It takes faith. You need to be believing for that when you begin to pray in the Spirit. Father, I received my spirit building today. Glory to God. I, I'm, I'm feeding on the Word. I'm exercising in the Word. And I'm acting on the Word. Amen. Now, let, we're, we're discussing healing and miracles and so forth. Let, let's talk about this for a moment. Remember last night, think about if you only ate a natural meal, 
when you came to church. I don't care if you come to church four or five times a week. If that's the only natural meal you take, you're going to be drastically undernourished. Amen. Amen. If you're only going to eat three, four times a week, you're not going to be with us long. Well, the same thing's true spiritually. You're going to have to feed on it when? Every day. So, begin to, let's go back to Proverbs chapter four now because here's the outline. Attend to my words. That means God's word. If, you go, if, you, if, you're gonna, if you're gonna be a person of faith. Now, we're not only talking about you becoming healed all of your financial needs met. It may not take a whole lot of money to supply your financial needs. But that's not all that's available in the Word of God. What is available is that you always having all sufficiency, always having all sufficiency, amen, in all things, abounding to every good work. You get to the place where you spend a whole lot more money blessing other people, blessing your church, and moving out in, in, in mission projects all over the world than you do on your own needs, man. You get up there in that, in that arena, it makes it easy to believe for your own personal needs because it didn't take you long to get out of debt. And you find out all that debt and all that borrowing was what making such a hard road a hole out of this in the first place. And it seems like all your stuff just kind of gets just washed away. <laughs> Amen. And the Lord is my shepherd. I do not want. Amen. Say it. The Lord is my shepherd. Lord is my shepherd. I, do I do not want. I don't want for healing. I don't want for, healing. I don't want for good health. I don't want for good health. He's, my He's my shepherd. I do not want. I do not want for finances because of his grace. He's made all grace abound towards me and I'm blessed and I'm full and I praise him for it. Now that ought to be the way you talk all the time. Instead of, oh Lord, I don't know what we're going to do. Oh God. Uh, oh no, I don't even want to look in the mirror. Oh, oh. Oh, my dad gum hair's coming out of everything else. <laughs> well, that's what the devil does. He curses and calls things to be not as though they were. Amen. Dad <sighs> gum it. <laughs> I'll be the first one over there laid off. <laughs> Call things be not as though they were. See, he can't get away from the system. It, it, it's exactly the same on the positive side. It's the same on the negative side. But what does God do? He blesses and calls things to be not as though they were. Oh, man. <laughs> Glory to God. You know, the Lord said, I'm looking at myself here. The Lord said, when he is on the earth, not one hair of your head will perish. Now every hair on your head is numbered. Glory to God, I claim my original count. <laughs> Come on, hair. Come on, hair. Hey, looking good. That's right. That's right. Amen. You're, you're in a position of praise all the time. Praise is the highest form of prayer and faith. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, <clears throat> praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you for it, Father. Attend to my words. 
incline your ear to my sayings. Now, what is that? Being a doer of the word and not just a hearer only. Let them not depart from your eyes. Don't attempt to quote all your scriptures. Amen. Amen. They need to go in your eyes. Jesus made a statement. And in fact, I'll tell you something that happened to me. Gloria and I had just read. No, let me back up a second. We, we had just quoted together Matthew 18, any two of you on earth shall agree as touching anything that they shall ask shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Very familiar scripture to anybody that knows anything about faith and about the Word of God. So we quoted that and we prayed and asked God. Well, I went in the other room. I did not make any faith connection at all and I knew it. Now, I don't go by my feelings. Well, how do you know if you agree? How many of you are married? <laughs> you, did you agree to it? <laughs> somebody came up with it and somebody agreed to do it. Then the other one said, let's do it today. The other one said, oh no, we're going to do it six months from today. And somewhere down the line, another agreement came in the day. But you, you, when you came together, you knew it. <laughs> you, made, you made a decision and you agreed, yeah, we're going to do it on that day. Yeah. Amen. Amen. This, 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 is not, this is not hard. <laughs> But it is an agreement. Mm -hmm. If we, oh, we do this all the time, you know, where we have to, we go into venues and we're, we're, we have to enter contracts months ahead of time for city auditoriums and that kind of thing. And, and they're, you know, they're quite expensive. Well, you sit down uh, and go, you just write that contract. All right. Now then, Mr. Copeland, we will provide this building for you for six days. It's yours 24 hours a day for six days. On the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth, and sixth of April. That right? Yeah. Good. For a price of uh, um, $135,000, that'd be, yeah, yeah. That's good. And, um, and we expect you to, uh, we expect to receive a check from you on the, this coming first of the next month for 50,000. Well, I sure hope so. <laughs> There's no agreement. They agreed, I hoped. Why, well, fear got to me whether or not I'm going to have the money. Nah, 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 nah. See, I didn't, well, don't you think I, I know I didn't agree? Yeah. That's, 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 this is not super scientific, brother. I mean, you know when you agree and when you don't. I left out of my closet and went right back in there to Gloria and I had my Bible in my hand. Let it not depart from your eyes. I went in there and Gloria said, what's the matter? I said, I didn't believe a word of that. She looked at me kind of funny. I said, I'm going to put my, I have to put my eyes on it here. These are the words of Jesus. These are the words of Jesus. And we went back through that again. I'm telling you, it was daylight and dark. Well, it's the other way around. It's dark and then the daylight came. Glory. I mean, I put my eyes on that and it struck me. That's the word of my master, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There's no way this is not going to come to pass. As long as the two of us stay in agreement, he'll never get out of it. Hallelujah. Amen. 
and he gave his blood sworn earth oath, it will come to pass. By my father, it will be done. He will do it. Amen. But I had to go back and feed on it. Now, every day since, you get back there and take another dose. Glory to God. It's medicine to your flesh. I'm looking at it. Keep it in my eyes. Keep it in my eyes. I first had to do what? Incline my ear to it. I believe this. Hold your index finger up like that. You got your Bible there handy? Open that for me. Just open this up. I choose to believe this. And I had my Bible open that 18th chapter of Matthew. And I said, Jesus, I choose to believe this. I said, Gloria, now I agree. She said, I agree. Ain't no way that's not coming to pass. In fact, it has come to pass. So, but that, that is so vitally important. I choose. Now, how do you release your faith? It's a spiritual force now. It's on the inside of you. Number one, decision. I've decided to release it. Now watch, this is very difficult. You don't want to miss it. I believe. That's the way you do it. Well, I just don't understand. It doesn't have nothing to do with you understanding anything. Do you know how to eat food? I can tell most of you do. I do too. <laughs> no, I, I know how to do that. You know how to do that. It had to be something wrong with you if you couldn't figure out how to eat. But you, in order to eat food, you don't have to start with the saliva in the mouth and figure out what's going to go on in all these, all these tubes and all these valves and all, all this stuff. You just know that this is the way you do it. I'm going to eat that. Thank you. And it's done. But now when you did that, all kinds of other stuff happened that you didn't have anything to do with. You just made the decision and you acted on it and your stomach and all different kinds of stuff went into action. Bubble, bubble, double, double, bumble, bumble, going all up and down all over the place. It worked. I mean, come on, man. Hallelujah. <laughs> right? 20th chapter of John. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's one thing about preaching around Mac and Lynn Hammond. You ain't got no idea how it's going to come out. You didn't <laughs> you did dive in, brother. <laughs> But oh, do I love it. Glory to God. I do love the word and I love what I do. 20th chapter of John. Now, <coughs> excuse me. Verse 26, after eight days again, his disciples were within and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then he said to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands. Reach hither thy hand, thrust it into my side, and be not faithless. Now, what had he done? Why was he, or how, and what did he do that was faith? Less. He said. Huh? He said. Unless I see the holes in his hands 
And unless I stick my hand in the hole in his side, listen, I will not believe. Ain't no way his faith could work. He shut it down. So Jesus said to him, Be not faithless. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord, my God. Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed. Blessed. I'm talking about the blessing. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. You believe by making the decision, I believe that. He could have made the decision when Mary testified and when the, when, when the two from Emmaus came and testified. He could have said, oh, glory to God. I'll, I'll, I'm, I choose to believe that. I know these people. I mean, they, what, what good did they get out of line to me? I just, boy, I've been, I hope so. I just believe so. I'm, I'm, I'm going to believe it. He could have done that just as easy as stand up there saying, I will not believe. Well, you can't get Abraham's blessing with Thomas's faith. Abraham was fully persuaded. And he said, I consider not my own body now dead, neither the deadness of my, the womb of my wife, but only that that God has promised. Hallelujah. Can you see his decision? He made the decision and he did what? Said it. Once he said it, but he's not done, then you got to act like it's true. Amen. Now faith is functioning. Feed on it. Get, get good, get good CDs and DVDs of faith messages. Dear Lord, anybody goes to this church, that ain't hard to find. That's the reason the Lord had us put the Believer's Voice of Victory Network on 24 hours a day. And, and we didn't, we didn't try to get um, different speakers for every hour. No, you need to be hearing the same one over and over and over and over again. You're not doing this for entertainment. Amen. If all you ever do is eat for entertainment, you're going to be sloppy. Sometimes you have to eat something you didn't want. Like Brussels sprouts. <laughs> You stood and I was a little boy, my, my mama feed me and I wouldn't swallow them. <laughs> Finally, you know. <laughs> but we're talking about nourishment and faith is so important. Faith is your life, brother. I mean, faith, faith is the most vital thing that exists. It is by faith so that it might be by grace. No faith, no grace, no grace. <laughs> you don't want to even think about it. You don't want to be anywhere without the grace of God. No love, no faith. Faith worketh by love. Well, you need to be, you, you need to have some, some favorite CDs on the love of God. You need to have some favorite CDs on faith. You need to have a favorite CD on healing. You need to have a favorite CD on, on sowing and reaping hundredfold. I'm telling you, praise God, you ought to get the, you ought to get the DVD of tonight just to get that testimony. Right there. Glory to God. That ought to be enough to gas you up for the, from now till the first of the year. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Someone's esophagus was just healed from burning, a deep burning. Hallelujah. Feed on it. Feed on it. Feed on it. You don't need to be listening to some goofball news program in the morning when you're driving to work. Dear Lord. 
way the traffic is around here, you can get a degree. Amen. <laughs> hey it's that way anywhere you go now. You can absolutely get a, a degree in faith in your car and get to where you enjoy traffic. I, I, I remember, I, I, I remember back, this is the way Gloria and I got it. And back there then, we had, we had to have a little battery operated tape recorder and you had to pull over the side of the road and we, 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 we wind it. And uh, amen. But oh man, I'm telling you, we didn't have time for TV. I still don't. I spent way too much time watching secular television. And boy, the Lord jerked that out of me here about 14 months ago, stripped it back down. I want you to know my spirit man has finally come back to my fighting weight. Glory to God. Amen. You can get up and tell the devil, I'm back. Get your sorry self out of the way or get run slap over. He'll leave. He will leave. Yeah, but I'm going to get you next week. Yeah. No. No. Amen. You remember the story John Osteen told that when God delivered him a fear, fear of flying, he was just... And, and he, so he said, I'm going to fly anyhow. Got on that airplane and he's just quoting scriptures all the way over there. And he got off that airplane. He said, glory to God. And the devil said, I'm going to kill you on the way home. <laughs> really? He said, no, you're not. You didn't kill me on the way over here and you ain't going to kill me on the way home. Amen. But you have to follow the receiving plan. Amen. Attend to the word. Put it first place. Attend to the word. Let's turn back over there and put it in our eyes just one last time. In Proverbs 4. Attend to my word, incline thine ear unto my saying, whatever he's saying, I'm going to act on it. Let them not depart from your eyes. I see myself with this. I see myself doing this. I see myself well. I see myself prospering. I see our family whole and well again. Glory to God. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Don't you let anything else get down in there. No. That the first moment, the first sign of fear, you stop right there. Don't you speak that fear word. Don't you, don't you give that opportunity to get down in there and get to messing with this word. No, you just stop it right there. No, 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 no. I incline my ear to the word and it said fear not. I fear not. I refuse to fear. You may be standing there with your knees knocking, saying, I'm not, I don't fear in the name of Jesus. And fear will have to bow its knee in your presence. Oh, I wish we had more time to talk about that. Now, they are life to those that find them in medicine, to all their flesh. Stay in it. Stay in it. Stay with it. Keep it in. Keep it going. Keep it in your heart. Keep it in your mind. Keep it in your eyes. Keep it in your ears. Keep it in your mouth. Don't let your mouth say anything but the Word of God. Hallelujah. And faith is coming. Faith is coming. Faith is coming. Now, you, you may not, you may, it doesn't seem like to you, you're any stronger than you ever were. But it had nothing to do with the way you feel about it. Right. Let me give you an illustration of this. The scripture, as I said, speaks in an unknown tongue, edifies himself. We were living in Tulsa. 
And I went to, from Tulsa to Lubbock and spoke at a full gospel businessman uh, fellowship meeting in the uh, Lyon cafeteria in, in Lubbock. And I've been reading on that scripture and I'm, I, I've, I've always prayed in tongues a lot. And Gloria and I got baptized in the Holy Ghost that less than three months after we got born again. So, and, and we both always prayed in the spirit, but I'm not, I'm not talking about a few shabba dabbas, you know, <laughs> I, I'm talking about spending some time at it. Amen. So I said, well, you know what I'm going to do? I got this drive to make anyway. It's 400 miles. I'm just going to pray in tongues all the way. Bro, Coleman, can you do that? Well, yeah, I could have prayed in my natural mind all the way home. You wouldn't have asked that. In 1 Corinthians 14 chapter said, I will pray with my spirit. When I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth. My mind's unfruitful. I will pray with my spirit. I will pray with my understanding. I will sing with my spirit and I will sing with my understanding. So I decided I will pray all the way home in tongues. And I did. And by the time I got home, all I could tell was I had a really dry throat. Well, see, this is not, this is not physical edification. It hadn't gotten from my spirit into my body yet. This spiritual thing. I just had a spiritual workout, several hours there, working out spiritually. And I'd never done it before, so I really wasn't all that sure about what to expect, you know. And I got, I got back to the house and, and uh, Gloria said, Kenneth, they called and Tommy Tyson is speaking at, at brother and sister so-and-so's home in their prayer group tonight and wanted to know if we wanted to come. I said, well, if Tommy's speaking, yeah, I'm tired, but we need to go hear him. So we went and they had a, a, a very large home and <clears throat> I mean, they, they could have church in that house. It was <laughs> that size of the house. And, uh, and we were just a couple of rows back and, and brother Tyson had a, a little uh, podium and a little, little Bible stand. And, and uh, he said, anyone that would like healing for your body, well, raise your hand. Several people raised their hand. He said, if there's someone, you're sitting there that someone next to you with their hand raised, turn around and lay hands on them. And, <clears throat> excuse me, he said, uh, uh, Brother Copeland, uh, would, you, would you turn around and, and lay hands on that sister there behind you? I said, sure. So Gloria and I both turned around and, and she had raised her hand. He said, now let's everybody stand. So we stood up, she stood up, she still had her hand up. I still had a dry throat. <laughs> but we turned around, both of us. And I said, in the name of Jesus, Man, I'm telling you, the power of God rose up on the inside of me, hit her, knocked her through the, the couple of chairs, knocking me back this way and glory to both. And she's big eyed, come on, glory to God. She said, I'm healed. I tell you, I'm healed. Well, see, as my spirit got edified, man, I, I was charged. Can you hear it? I was charged with that same spiritual force, amen, that connects with faith, the laying on of our hands through the law of contact and transmission, the contact of our hands transmitting the healing power of God that's resident inside the spirit of every born again believer. The believer shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That power is inside every born again believer. But in a lot of cases, it's so weak it can't get out. It's like somebody that hadn't eaten in so long, you're not going to get much out of them if they do start to run about four steps is it. You know, I mean, a three-legged cat outruns somebody that hadn't eaten in months. <laughs> but that, that simple spiritual law, the contact 
of your hand. Transmitting the healing power of God in the name of Jesus. But now it's going to have to have some faith from the other end because something has to take connection and draw it in there. It's like Say, I have on a metal glove and he's got a magnet in his hat. (laughs) (laughs) What happened? Faith connects with like power which in this case was healing power being released by faith in the name of Jesus. And that person is believing the same verse of scripture that he will recover. Did we get any word tonight? Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Now, this is something that the Lord instructed me to do this afternoon while I was praying. Anyone that 